let's find the volume of a sphere. Of course, we already know the answer, right? So the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, where that's the radius of the sphere r. But how do you find that? Well, the obvious way is to integrate over the whole volume of the thing, but then you need to know the volume element. And you could do this in Cartesian coordinates, right? Where the volume element is dx, dy, dz, but that's not so easy because then you have really whacked out limits of integration. If I use spherical coordinates, then I can integrate uh, in more reasonable fashion, right? If I integrate over the whole volume, I can integrate for r from 0 to r. I can integrate theta from 0 to pi, because it goes from here all the way down to there. And then I can integrate phi from 0 to 2 pi. So those are easy integral limits, but then I have to deal with the volume element in, in spherical coordinates. So let's just look at this in just a second. Um, what is the 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 limits of integration or the volume element. So let's imagine I let this expand a little bit in the r direction, the theta direction, and the phi direction and make a box, right? So let's just start with looking at this from the side. Here's the x, z direction, and then here is my r. If I want to go in the r direction from here to there, that's a distance dr, that's fine. And then if I want to go in the theta direction like that, I'd go a little bit that way, and then so I get a box like this. And then so the question is, how long is this piece or that piece? I'm going to assume they're the same length. Well, it's not d theta, right? Because d theta is not a distance. So it depends on how far away it is. So this is actually going to be r d theta, r d theta. So the, the area element in polar coordinates is r, r d r d theta. Now what if I want to do the same thing in the in the in the phi direction. Well, I need to project that down, right? So now that is my length, my length of this as it moves. It's kind of hard to draw this in. Um, let's, let's go this way, like that. There's my box. Now what's that length? Well, if I project that down, it's that length right there. So this is my radius, which is r sine theta. And then this length is going to be d phi. So if I put all these together, I get dv equals uh, well, I have r, dr, d theta, d phi, and then I have an r, an r dr, and then I have an r sine theta. So if I put that all together, I get r squared sine theta, dr, d theta, d phi. So now the integral should be easy, right? Of course, it's not super easy, so let's do it anyway. It's not super bad, but it's not like, it's not like free. It's not like a free integral. So the volume is going to be the integral from r equals 0 to r. The integral, I'm really just doing this because I want to do Python stuff at the end. r equals, no, theta equals 0 to pi. Phi equals 0 to 2 pi. Uh, r squared sine theta dr d theta, d phi d theta. Let's do the easiest integral first. Let's integrate over d phi. If I do that, there's no other phi term in there, so the integral of d phi is just going to be phi. So this is going to be volume is the integral. Let's just put r theta r squared sine theta dr d theta phi from phi equals 0 to 2 pi. And if I do that, I put in 2 pi, I get 2 pi. If I put in 0, I get 0. So this becomes 2 pi times the integral over r, integral over theta, r squared sine theta d theta. OK, now we need, let's do the theta integral. OK, let's integrate sine theta d theta. That's not too bad. That's going to give me uh, v equals 2 pi. The integral of sine theta is negative cosine theta. So I get uh, r, r squared. Oh, there's a dr there, there too. r squared dr negative cosine theta from 0 to pi. Now let's put in our limits of integration. I get 2 pi integral over r, r squared dr. And then I'm going to put in pi, the integral of pi of cosine of pi is negative 1. So this is actually going to be negative negative 1, which is 1, minus, uh, oh, 
the integral of at 0, which is 1. What did I do wrong? The integral of sine theta d theta, it's going to be pi, which is negative 1, times 1, times negative 1, so it's 1, minus uh, this at 0, minus the negative. Okay, that's right. Whew. <laughs> Whoa, that was close, 2. So now I get a 2, so I get 4 over out front. So now I get volume is 4 pi, the integral over r, r squared dr, which is going to be, that's easy to integrate. I get 4 pi, uh, nope, times r cubed over 3 from 0 to r, which is going to be 4 thirds pi r cubed done. So it's really easy once you have that uh, volume element. Let's do this another way. Let's do this the Monte Carlo way, just because I think it's funny. Um, so imagine, you know, if I break, if I break a bunch of points into a, put a bunch of random points in a sphere like that, how would I calculate the volume? You can't, right? If I knew the volume of each element, I could, but I don't know the volume of a sphere, so I can't do that. So instead, I'm going to do this. I'm going to break point. Let me draw this in two dimensions. So imagine I have random points in a box. And in that box, I have more points. So some of these points out here aren't in the sphere, and some are in the sphere. And if I know the, the volume of the cube, there's a cube, volume of a cube is going to be r cubed. So this is a cube of length r, r cubed. And then the volume of a sphere, v sphere, is going to be the number of points in the sphere divided by the number of total points times r cubed, the radius of that, right? It's the ratio. The ratio of the points in here to the, the total points would be the ratio of the volume of the cube to the volume of the sphere. Actually, I should have wrote it like that. Number of points in the sphere to the number of total is the volume of the sphere to the volume of the cube, and the volume of the cube is r cubed. So I'm going to pick r equals 1, but it doesn't really matter. I want to see if I get that 4 thirds pi value in there. So let's do this in Python. I've never done this. It might be a disaster, but I'm willing to take that chance. I'm willing to take that chance. So here I have Python. Um, this is web v Python. That's not real Python. So let's just say r equals 1. And then I'm going to say n equals 0, n equals 100, while n less than n, print n, n equals n plus 1. So this is one simple way of counting up to the number of points I want. So I get 100. Uh, now I want to make a random point in a cube. So I'm going to say uh, rt equals r times a vector. Now random gives me a number between 0 and 1. If I multiply 2 random minus 1, it gives me a number between negative 1 and 1, and that's what I want. So I'm going to say 2 times random minus 1. That's my x coordinate. That's a random number between negative 1 and 1, and I multiply by r. And I want the same thing for the x, the y, and the z. And let's put a sphere there just to show it. Position is equal to rt. Radius equals... Uh, r over 60 I'm going to pick. Let's see what that looks like. And that's 100 points. 100 points in a cube. It's kind of cool. And you can zoom in. Whee! Okay. Let's do 1,000. There's 1,000 points in a cube. Now what I want to do is I want to take those points and find out which ones are in a sphere. So I'm going to come down here and say ns equals zero. That's my total number of points in the sphere. And I made my random points, and I made my sphere, and let's see, no, let's do this. If mag rt less than or equal to r, then it's in the sphere. So I'm gonna say ns equals ns plus one, and I wanna change this. I'm gonna make those points yellow, okay? So I'm gonna put a sphere there, and they're going to be yellow. So it's going to be color equals color 
dot yellow. And then otherwise, if it's not in there, uh, else make it cyan. So let's put the same thing. We'll make it cyan. I think this will work. Okay, so now I'm counting all the points in the sphere as in S, and I'm counting all the points as all the points as a thousand. So let's just see if this makes two different color spheres, and there you go. So there's my yellow spheres in the sphere, and my cyan one's not. Now I just need to find the ratio of those times r cubed. So let's print, uh, let's calculate it. Vs is going to be equal to r cubed, I'll put that in parentheses, times ns divided by n. Print v equals vs. And now let's do the same thing for the theoretical. Uh, Vt is going to be equal to 4 thirds times pi times r cubed, and print that. Not p -int. Print Vt equals Vt. Let's see if it works. I've never done this before. Don't know if it's going to work. If it doesn't work, I'm going to feel really dumb, but you never know. I think it's the same thing. <gasps> my cube is not... My cube is r by r. That's why. So my my volume, so this should be, so I made a mistake over there. This should be uh, times 2r cubed. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. I got it to work. Now, I did make a mistake in the earlier part, but I had the right idea. So I got 4.3 and 4.18. Um, if I increase this to, let's say, 3,000 points just for fun, and I run it, I get something even closer, and it looks cool, and I can zoom in and out of it. Oh, that looks great. Ooh, all the way out. Borg cube right there. That looks, that's just cool. Okay, so there you go. Volume of a sphere. The Python stuff's just bonus. I will give you the code to this in the link down below. Hope you enjoyed that. I had fun.